sorry. This land our a little bit cold. Is our Zimbabwe a land of peace for you and me? Once born in pain and segregation, but now we live in harmony. Now flies the flag, our nation's glory. The Climate Change Coalition. I'm the Deputy Director there, and we are based in Bulawayo. Okay, thank you very much. And Good afternoon. My name is Elizabeth Gulugulu uh, from African Youth Initiative on Climate Change Zimbabwe. We are based here in Harare. Yeah, um, hi, my name is John Buchan Mwandu. I'm on climate change, and I also work with FA Zero. All right. Thanks for coming and uh, responding to our uh, request at sh such short notice. But anyway, today we're really talking about um, COP25. COP25 is Conference of Parties and what the outcomes were. And before that, preceding that, I understand there was a Conference of Youth and in, this is the ambit that you guys fall in. Mm -hmm. And maybe we're actually going to discuss more about that. Um, our topic today is looking at national interests versus uh, realities of science. Um, I understand when we went out there, you were discussing about what is the climate situation uh, at present and what needs to be done at present. And how can you guys also play a big part in seeing those um, uh, initiatives or whatever in NDCs um, to see that they are seen through. My question maybe will start with um, Lisa and maybe you can give us an idea. Uh, what is uh, COI? Uh, what is it all about from the perspective of your visit? Um, okay, thank you. Um, COI, COI, is um, Conference of Youth on Climate Change. Um, this year at Madrid, Spain, it was the 15th session. This came about um, after the youth um, realized that they were being sidelined in COP, which is the Conference of Parties on Climate Change. Um, so our role as youth um, is to conscientize um, each other and other fellow youths uh, on climate change issues and how we can take an active role in policy and also in implementation of uh, programs and projects. Okay, thank you very much. And Elizabeth? Yes, just to add on to what Lisa said. So um, conference of the parties, it never used to allow young people to attend. So as a group, one of the constituencies of the UNFCCC, there is a group which represents young people, which is called Yungo. They came up with this idea of having a conference of youth prior to the conference of the parties, because previously conferences of the parties, it never allowed children and youth to participate. So at the conference of youth, young people would gather, share ideas, interact, then they would participate in different working groups and come up with a report which they would submit to conference of the parties since they were not allowed to participate. Then things later on changed when young people were now allowed, young people and children now allowed to participate also to negotiate uh, on behalf of their countries. Then, but still, even if they were now allowed, um, the constituents decided not to stop the conference of youth because there are still other people that are not accredited to participate in the conference of the parties. So these conference of youth, they will keep on happening prior to the COP to the cops in the coming cops that will be coming. Okay, and Jean? Yeah, um, maybe since the ladies have said it all, I will emphasize more on the outcomes that come about uh, okay. conference of youth. So Yungo, the platform that she was talking about, and several working groups that it has, and they work throughout the year, you know, tackling all the issues that affect climate environment and climate change in general. So they have issues to do with oceans, to do with adaptation, to do with national determined contributions that were recently developed from the Paris Agreement. So you see that it's constantly updated. And that's the reason why we still continue having this course because they react positively from the current outcomes or current initiatives that will be transpiring at a certain time. Okay. So you will notice that uh, at COI, we also participate or we, after strengthening our working groups, uh, you will see that we also have our outcomes from the working groups that we have uh, that 
encompasses like initiatives from different young people from across the Bronx, sharing experiences and best practices that we can also extend to the site events that will be transpiring ahead of Conference of Partners. So you would not find young people represented in a certain, you know, go to in a certain site event presenting the outcomes of their working group, maybe say of in co-conservation and agriculture. Okay. We can also have other press conferences that we take part in that we conduct also as part of the Yongo. Okay, okay. So how much uh, influence are you exerting on COP as youth? Maybe who wants to take that one? Okay. Uh, like I mentioned, so the UNFCCC, um, there are a certain number of groups that it has to it has to put in front first. Like each and every group is represented. If you're indigenous people, you are sure that you are represented uh, from a climate perspective. If you're a business person, people, you are also represented from a climate perspective. So children and youth are represented from a climate perspective, which is the constituency I was talking about, which is called Yungo, which means their input is valued. And also to mention that at the conference of the parties, even the UN Secretary General came to the closing plenary session just to show you how much important this conference is, which can take someone, I mean the UN Secretary General to come wow. and, you know, and give his inputs and also keep on encouraging young people all over the globe to keep on doing a good job. So young people, they play a very, they play a very uh, pivotal role when it comes to conference of the parties because we are saying, we are discussing about our future. So you cannot discuss about our future without us. So we know what we want, and you are the people that are capable of making decisions on our behalf. So we are telling you what you want so that you also do not compromise the present generation and the future generation. Okay. And tell me, you've just mentioned the issue of children and youths. What ages are we talking about? Is it from zero to some, st what ages are we talking about in terms of representation? In terms of representation, of course, we are talking about from zero to 35, but then when it comes to participation of these conferences, we are talking about uh, from 10, but you need to have someone who will accompany you to attend these sessions. For example, we had a young boy here from Victoria Falls. Okay. What's his name? Kosi. Kosi. He was actually representing Zimbabwe. Not only Zimbabwe, but the rest of Africa, amongst the, uh, amongst other young people from other continents. But he had to come with someone who was escorting him because he cannot, he's not allowed to travel alone. Okay. Yeah. So you actually required a guardian to be there to yes. tender um, over the discussions. Yes. Maybe, Lisa, just give us an idea. Um, you guys went there, you saw what happened. How, in terms of Zimbabwe, how does one get to participate in these programs um, from Zimbabwe? How do you end up going to, co to COI or COP25? COP okay, um, so what happened uh, for me and Jen, <laughs> I'll say that um, we have been in the climate change industry for quite some time and we've been working with the Climate Change Management Department as well as UNDP. So under um, a project called the SECA project with the UNDP, they had uh, funding for people to attend um, COP and also COI. So for COI, it was specifically for the youth. So that is when uh, Jean and myself were chosen to partake in the conferences. Okay. Give us an idea of how many youths actually attended this uh, particular, uh, this year's uh, programs. How many were you in, in, in terms of numbers? From Zimbabwe. From Zimbabwe. Okay. I would say five. Five? <laughs> sure five. How many? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I didn't stay for the whole COP, so I'm not too sure. I think he's asking for Koi. For Koi. Okay. okay. For Koi, it was just the three of us. And okay. you'll see that I'm from Southern Africa. Um, which other country was the? There was South Africa. There was South Africa, yeah. There was Namibia. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So okay. that is a, a small number, like if you really look at it, because you'd have other regions, like maybe from the European countries, coming their numbers, 20s, 30s. So when it comes to the issues, the working groups that Elizabeth spoke about, we were not able to cover all of them because we were few in number. Okay, well, that's very interesting. You've just brought up a subject which I would really want to explore more. Uh, Africa, uh, are we holding our own or we're still, we're still struggling in terms of representation? Um, um, 
Yeah, uh, so there are two platforms here. We have Koi, mm-hmm. which was the three, but we also have Koi. Mm-hmm. Uh, in terms of Koi, we, I would say we have felt inconsistency mm-hmm. and uh, the inability to engage other young people. Okay. I will tell you, youth, you know, like youth is a phase. It's not like something that you stay. Mm-hmm. We come as youth and we go. So most of the exposed young people that have been present and participating on these platforms, they, they have progressed themselves because they have used the platform and they, you know, they are eligible for other platforms or go out maybe to be a negotiator. So their value for COI is a little bit lessened. They don't value COI as much as they used to do. And when it comes to, to other countries, for instance, Zimbabwe, funding has been a challenge for young people to participate at those platforms, I would say Koi. Okay. So, and exposure at the same time, mm-hmm. knowing the platform, that there's a platform like this that gives, this is maybe due to lack or inadequate information, flow amongst, you know, because these issues are on the internet and they take interest also, like as young people, you should be interested in climate change issues to know that there are bodies and there are certain things that happens. But uh, even bringing the whole closer home, there are some initiatives that are happening here that young people don't even know themselves. So that has been a major challenge as well. So you will see that we have had less representation in this in these issues, especially at Koi. But uh, that's where we come in as young people okay. who are really dedicated to this platform so that we can maybe be able to mobilize other young people, build masses, and strengthen our capacities. Our visions, our visions are driven through. Could be at, you know, at COI. And then at COP also, I would say it's nearly the same issue. And uh, the issue of bureaucracy, the issue that you mentioned, that at times young people we are sort of seen down upon, that it's difficult to get accreditation. And, you know, the process seems too far fetched. I yeah. mean, in Africa, we are more of uh, engaged with other things, nature, biodiversity, not the internet to look. Things okay. like negotiations, it's all new, it's a new culture, it's mm-hmm. not something that everybody is exposed to, so we have to, to be developed and we have to find funds to use and to play along with a longer time. Okay, so in terms of the history of Zimbabwe um, participating in, in COI, um, what, what has been the numbers? I mean, you probably have the history. Last year, how was it in the previous year? What is um, maybe obtaining now? If we look at the numbers, uh, Elizabeth, uh, the numbers are less than five people representing. Actually, five could be an underestimate because I think this year is when we had the most people representing from Zimbabwe, like having three young people representing Zimbabwe. Mm. But from the previous year, it would be one or two, one or two people representing. Of which, if you if you take a closer look, those people already had already created their um, their status on a global level. So it would be easy for them to participate on core issues. Okay. So w- what you're bringing out is there's um, one cohesion, lack of cohesion in terms of Zimbabwe. Do we have a platform where we can actually bring all the youths out there and say, okay, um, COP has just ended. Let's work on a plan for next year. And next year we have an intention of maybe going with 10, 20 people. Is there a strategy? in terms of uh, what I've just mentioned, uh, uh, Elisa. Okay, um, I would say that um, with the African Youth Initiative on Climate Change, it is uh, a platform that is now uh, brought about like cohesion for the youth like across the country. Because you see that there are organizations that are represented from Bulawayo, from Mashringo, and um, it's really growing. And for, for us, um, as a recommendation, I'll say we would um, lobby for more resources so that we can go in a larger number. Because um, for us to be there, we also find it. Hey? So we, we cannot guarantee to say that next year we want to go with 10. But what we can do is to lobby. But um, I'm glad to say that with the government and specifically the Climate Change Management Department and UNDP, there are plans to involve youths um, to 
um, teach them on climate change issues so that um, as, they, as we go on forward, there might be more participation and more interest from youths from different fields. Because when you look at climate change, it's not just about people who are interested in climate change, but um, all sectors, they are affected, agriculture, um, and we need to be involved in adaptation and mitigation. And it's difficult to tell someone that they need to reduce their emissions and um, be part of the NTC project when they don't understand what climate change is. So from us as a, as a team, our main goal this year, the coming year 2020, mm -hmm. is to ensure that many youths are educated on climate change and what actions that they can be able to take without necessarily waiting for funding. Okay, okay. Now we'll be talking about the background and uh, how Zimbabwe stands and uh, the challenges that have been coming through. Um, when you left for Spain, obviously you had objectives. What were your objectives when to go and uh, participate? As you're saying, you're carrying the Zimbabwean flag. Mm. Uh, what messages were you taking there? What were you negotiating for um, at these platforms? Maybe Jim can. Okay, so, um, yeah. Since there are two platforms, I'll start with the core. Um, as young people, we went through with uh, a youth position um, all the topical issues that we do, energy eco conservation, the NDCs, um, the you know the agriculture, the oceans, everything that affects climate change, all the working groups that we did. So us as Zimbabwe, we had a standpoint as young people because we are well engaged and we have been trying to engage other young people. I know our reach could have not been maxi could have been better and could have been maximized in other ways but like they mentioned issue of resources also is like a backdrop but with the information that we had and the reports that we had we tried to go there with the Zimbabwe position um, engage with other young people share our own best practices and also learn their own best practices build synergies with other young people uh, establish and strengthen the platform that is already there okay. the core one and uh, make sure that we also influence the decisions that, are, that we have were made or the outcomes that were brought forward. And also try, strain ourselves to get a real representation of youth in Zimbabwe when it comes to initiatives that will come up. And um, when it comes to COP, we also aimed for nearly the same things. I'll mention a few of my colleagues will say that we, we talked about uh, the the issue of partnership, which is really key. How best can we maximize? Um, because, you know, there's always strength in synergies and numbers. You know, you can do better when you're there, when you are more, and also learn best practices from other people. So we try to partner, create uh, good platforms with all established partners, and mm -hmm. also the layman, some which did not know anything, but they have the knowledge that we might require and need. And also we'll share the platforms that we have and see how best we can help each other in those platforms. And uh, when it comes to the negotiations, yes, you may come back to me, but I'll also wait for some of my colleagues. Mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> Elizabeth. <laughs> Yeah, no one loves talking about <laughs> negotiations. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. So COP was supposed to end on the 13th of December and eventually it ended on the 15th of December because of these negotiations. negotiations. No one loves to talk about negotiations. And we had situations when people, when we would actually go back to our hostels or to our hotels around 2 a.m., 3 a.m., still trying to reach a consensus. And there are a lot of issues that are negotiated are, are negotiate, are negotiated on the table, issues to do with climate finance. Mm -hmm. Article 6 was the most common one where people wanted to know about the international markets of carbon credits. Mm -hmm. um, issues to do with uh, loss and damage. Mm -hmm. um, issues to do with adaptation mm -hmm. and uh, the national determined contributions. Because um, Jean mentioned that, uh, mentioned about the national determined contributions. But basically what we mean about national determined contributions is we ratified to the Paris Agreement and we are supposed to come up with, the with our national determined contributions. But they need a strategy and the strategy are our low emissions development strategy. So our word and our main objective as young people is how different governments can engage young people in the national determined contributions and how our projects can speak into our national policies. But as for the negotiations themselves, they didn't go well, mm -hmm. uh, which is why uh, they had to extend some sort of days. But uh, under the Gender Action Plan on Climate Change, I think it's one of the negotiations which went well, because at least they managed to come up with a five-year strategic plan. 
uh, but the rest they didn't go well people are still discussing and they'll be finished in 2020 and Lisa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Your so contribution. I guess, uh, I guess much, much has been said, but um, representing like my organization, like I said, Zimbabwe Climate Change Coalition, and also I'm a member of the African Youth Initiative on Climate Change. My main um, objective and purpose was to go and, and find out, like to have different ideas on how we can spread the climate change message. Because like I said before, it's difficult for you to talk about NDCs, to talk about adaptation, when the roots, like the, the, the people don't actually know what climate change is. And I personally got to learn a lot, like from people from different countries, like from Mexico, from Canada, from Germany, because there was that platform for, um, for talking like with, with, with other young people. Mm -hmm. And also, um, just to hint like on, on the negotiations, um, as we all know, climate change is real. Like we, we, we don't have to be told like a lot of science or, or, or what, because like as Zimbabwe, like as Southern Africa, um, after Cyclone Idai, we know what happened and how devastating it can be. So as Africa, our position was um, we need more, when it comes to climate finance, we need um, something which is substantial because um, yes, the developed countries, they pledged, but only a small percentage of countries like the developing is receiving that funding for them to be able to adapt and um, have mitigation measures. So it is still an issue that really needs to be looked into, the same as the loss and damage, um, to say that um, we, we, we need a, a finance mechanism which has been set out, which is going to be followed by both um, the developing and the developed countries. So as you said, COP didn't end well, but we are hopeful that we'll keep on working and lobbying and when it comes to COP26, something will be reached. Okay. Now, just a question. Um, who doesn't want to participate? I mean, in terms of the parties, you, there were a lot of countries <laughs> out there. Who doesn't want to participate like the others? I, I know there were glitches that I saw in the paper and countries that were holding out, especially on the issues of the NDCs, uh, to say we need more time. Uh, maybe just give us an indication. I'm not saying uh, yeah. pull them out, but maybe the countries that are saying, no, look, um, science is this, but we still want to continue uh, using fossil fuel. We still want to produce as much emission as yeah. we can. <laughs> That's true. I'll give to Elizabeth to take this I know one. this is Jean's <laughs> favorite topic, but I'll just tackle it a bit. <laughs> so when it comes to indices, basically in short, we are saying we need ambitious goals from mm -hmm. different countries. Mm -hmm. So if we are referring to parties, we are referring to countries, but it's just the technical mm -hmm. language that language we use when we are in the COP circles. So we need ambitious goals, and countries should show that they are serious in reducing their carbon emissions, their greenhouse gas emissions, mm -hmm. by putting in forward their ambitious goals. For example, our goal or our objective as Zimbabwe is to reduce our carbon emissions by 33% by 2030. These are our ambitious goals. But we are also in the process of reviewing this, these indices by 2020, which is next year, which means that maybe most probably these, um, our goals would shift maybe to 50% or ETC. So we have a lot of countries that were saying, you know what, in as much as we ratified to the Paris Agreement, these goals, we need time to achieve them. You know, we cannot stop mining coal. We cannot stop this. For example, we have America. America will tell you that this is not practical. We are just coming here for a talk show. And of course, we can do other projects and stuff, but for us, it's not practical. We cannot meet the demand of which, if they do that, they are pulling us back. Because for your own information, the developed countries, they pollute more than African countries. African countries, we pollute like less than 3%. So if a developed country will tell you that it's not willing to commit, then they are putting us at risk because we are the ones that are facing the effects on the ground. For example, climate Idai, we are not capable to adapt. We do not have the resources. So if they are not willing to give us a certain amount for us to adapt, then it becomes a challenge. And if they decide to pull out from the Paris Agreement, it also becomes a challenge to us, the developing countries, because we cannot adapt to these effects. But they are developed, they can adapt. If Cyclone Idai had hit uh, America, I swear, 
I'm sure maybe maybe five percent <laughs> or two percent of people could have been affected, but it hit Zimbabwe and we were not prepared. And we were not prepared because we do not have the resources to prepare well in advance, and we were at fault. So these are some of the issues that we'll be discussing at the negotiations. Okay, can I just ask you this? Are we not being wimp, wimpy about we want money, we want this, we're in a disadvantage, we are a developing country, uh, and they're saying, no, it's your own problem, fix your own. Aren't they, isn't the situation where we're getting it, where people are saying Africans or developing countries are crying too much uh, for more money? And when they, we do give them money, sometimes they don't use it properly. I'm, I'm sure you've seen those issues coming out to the foray. Jean, you would like to comment on that? Well, that's the thing. Um, you know what's interesting is, um, I know we are at a vulnerable state, uh, and the ladies have put it well, like, mm. really, yep. really good. But climate change is like a global issue. Yes. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's not an issue that affects, you know, a certain country, developing countries and African countries only. We are saying this because we are working together in harmony. That's why it is uh, a challenge that was called in by the UN, UN Secretary General in uh, September, you know, when the call for climate action. You know, he did that because he knew that this is the era, this is like the most thing that holds us back together after maybe 50 years, you know, after the World War. Why is that? Because even us as, as African countries and developing countries, if we suffer the most, climate change is still going to affect the developed countries. And they need us for the clean hands, clean air. They need us for the infrastructure. They need us for the, you know, for everything that we have, for the wetlands, for everything. So that's where you see that the matter becomes an issue of uh, having people like coordinating their efforts and approaches. I mean, we can still go for development, but we can't. We have to stop. We have to go green now because they have done it before and we have seen that it's a failed road. It's something that we can't keep on doing. That's why they also rely on us because we need the lead vegetation that we have. For instance, I'll give you one good example. Vegetation actually come holds, I would say, about 30% of the emissions that we put up in the atmosphere. The vegetation itself, you know, the eco-conservation, the nature-based solutions. So you would see that there is a role that Africa plays, a critical role in mitigation as much as we would like to adapt. So hurricanes are hitting, you know, the developed countries. The rate that it's hitting them, it's a little bit lessened. That's why you will see that if we continue this path, we are heading for even worse emissions by 2030 and a degree of three, you know, a temperature rises with a degree of three degrees. That's not even good. And it's even worse, and it will even affect them also at the same time. So it's not a matter of begging. We are not begging, no. We are agreeing on what each and every person has to do. Okay, so you're saying you've got something to negotiate with. We've got something to offer as Africa, more so as Zimbabwe. Um, Lisa, let's, let's, let's look at our part as Zimbabwe. Um, and our NCDs. Um, she talked about 33% as the target, and maybe we might just go to 50%. Mm -hmm. I think it's doable. Uh, this is my opinion. But anyway, um, there are things that we've been forced to do uh, by the very situation that we find ourselves in. For instance, we have no power. So a lot of people are now migrating to renewable energy. Okay, I'm sure you've seen how people mm -hmm. are now with think there's potential there. Um, are we being forced to kind of like if we really look at Zimbabwe in terms of the NCDs, are we being forced by the situations to adapt or maybe, I don't know, what's your comment on that? Okay, um, I'll start with what you said, um, asking if we are not being wimpy, like crying okay. for, 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 for nothing. Um, the truth is that for us um, as, as a country, I think um, with the Climate Change Management Department is really doing a good job because for it to be able to establish like a 33%, when Elizabeth said that um, our emissions as a continent are like less than 3%, like it's really a lot. And um, I, I would say that um, when it comes to um, the situation that we are in, maybe yes, it is forcing us like to, to, to look at renewable energy as, a, as an alternative so that we can be able to meet our indices. But at the same time, it all goes back to funding. We still need um, the, the developed countries um, to, to, 
um, make the conditions like of, of funding and to 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 be in a more which word can I, can I use in a form favorable uh, way yes because um the funding it is there but you would see that the, the the way that it then is brought to us like it's a whole lot of procedure and at the end of the day we are not able like to 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 move from um renewables to non-renewables so um as a country um with the department as i said they're really doing a good job so yes um people are cutting down trees and all but it's we cannot blame it on them but what we can then say is if we can help them then to say we're going to provide solar panels or we're going to do abcd is going to be um it's going to make the situation a little bit better but at the same time um as i said before um i'll always go back to climate education and awareness that is very important because um like um climate change doesn't affect one one sector it affects a lot of people um in different sectors it affects health it affects um even education so that we we need to have that um comprehensive um awareness so that everyone can be able to then go back and have um climate actions like that can be able to that are best suited like in their environment and what is affecting them okay now you guys are talking um, very good about the climate department and I'm just thinking how many people went in terms of big numbers were they ready did they go with the right numbers I saw a couple of times um, via um, internet um, that uh, most countries even America would uh, take in 500 people to one COP event uh, and how many people do, did we take from Zimbabwe? I mean, tell us, you guys talking about the climate <laughs> department doing so well. So what happens to most developed countries is they have different expertise, different experts. So you find out that these 500 people, they, they do not attend at the same time. So we have lawyers that will come in and will try to simplify the issues when it comes to negotiations because all these terms are too technical and sometimes too scientific. So they try to break down the technical parts so that people can understand they negotiate, then they pass their reports, then they go. Then there's another team that will come in that will try to simplify and process the information, then they'll go. And the other team will also come in. So as for us, it's different. So it's just a small number. Uh, I think approximately 45 to 50 okay. that went. And not all of us attended for the whole COP duration. Some came to attend for a week because um, you need to understand also that when you attend COP, you are not all uh, negotiating. Some will be following the side events that will be happening at COP. Then we have the negotiators, the lead negotiators, which goes into the negotiations room with a specific team. So, yeah, our delegation was a number of 45 to 50. I'm not so sure of the exact number, but it ranges from 45 to 50. And the other thing is because of finance, um, because of finance and the funding, at times you find out that when the COP comes to an end, we, we, those people would have left already. And when the COP comes to an end, that's when most important decisions are supposed to be made. So you find that most countries will tell you that, okay, fine, we have heard what you have said, but because our technical experts, they have left, we cannot give you a position as for now. So it also pulls us back because we don't have proper funding to make people attend from day one of COP to the last day of COP. Okay. Um, in terms of uh, raising funds for, uh, for COP, um, what, do, what is your take? I mean, obviously, you've raised the challenge that uh, as Zimbabwe, our biggest challenge is funding. Uh, more so, attending the program and negotiating for our benefits. I, I, I'm not sure how Africa was represented. And when you look at numbers, but uh, it, it just tells me something that there's a big, big gap in terms of the numbers that are going to negotiate on behalf of Zimbabwe. And why are we not using the same strategies that the Americans are using where they have experts at different stages going to inform um, the decisions that are going to be made? Um, any takers for my question? Yeah. Um, okay, so maybe I'll start with the first one that you asked earlier, uh, you know, when you asked the issue of... Uh, the negotiations themselves, like what's the position? I think we also have to take into consideration that um, when we go there, you know, as negotiators, it's uh, all these parties. It's not um, 
it's not just negotiating for the sake of negotiating or asking somebody but it's because there are so many matters at risk for instance economies like they could be crippled out of these things because they have things that have to be risked you know the issue of health system how you are operating how your clinics are cooperated how your country is running that's why we have to negotiate in the first place we have to agree on certain things what are we going to let loose what are we going to cut how are we going to reduce this how are we going to develop man develop you know like she was saying that some people we cut trees maybe for agricultural purposes because as we we get our food so those are some of the things that we have to look into consideration that's why we negotiate it's not a matter of asking for favors and stuff but it's a matter of how best can we you know take care of the workers that we're working at a mining you know plant as we close down the land degradation initiative you know those are some of the things that we're talking about and then when we go back to your to your question that you just asked now um yeah we could do better as african negotiators we could be as many as we can be and try to solidify and you know so that we don't strain ourselves because it's an healthy one too it also broadens the things that uh, the outcomes that you bring about um but in terms of funding it's it's a mere challenge itself but um i would personally because i've been it has been advantageous for us most youth organizations and organizations out there they look for their funding from different plat platforms and partners um and that's a challenge like she said you get to change your your main goal or some of the things because you have to act you also have to develop to the donor who has given yeah. funding for you so those that's another challenge that we face as africans but yeah it's a cry to all the stakeholders out there even to the national planning you know that we also set aside so that we can strengthen this uh, capacity because trust me climate change has huge impact on on everything that we do even our economies you know our political our social life itself so there's so much things that we need to so unfortunately but it's also a reiteration also to the UN to the development partners out there to also listen to the stories out there so that they can support different groups gender strengthen gender have women participate on these platforms um, have all sectors represented well and come up with deliverables not only to attend but also in the development processes that's mining the data from communities from different platforms universities you know the grassroots all the industry you know the farming the agriculture we have to take care of all that process mm -hmm. it okay so the underlying issue that you guys have just raised uh, from the discussion is the issue of conditions on funding. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. They seem to have mainstreamed them somehow. <laughs> uh, in some instance, you have to be a woman to go, or you have to be a youth, and yeah. then maybe you have people like my age uh, who are left out because already there's some condition that's been set. Um, in terms of um, discussing and negotiating on that premise, uh, how far have we gone? Did, was anything done in terms of uh, from the youth side or from COP side to say, look, your, 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 your conditions are too heavy for us as Africans or as Zimbabwe? Lisa. Um, let me give this one to Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to negotiations, I always give it to her. So I think um, I'll start from Zimbabwe. I think uh, from Zimbabwe. The fact that we had Lisa and Jean who attended COP, we are heading in the right direction. But like Jean said, these two were funded by the government of Zimbabwe and I was funded by an international organization. Which means that in as much as I'm accredited as a party page, but uh, I'm accredited as a party page, but the people who have funded me they have their own terms of references. It will mean that I cannot fully participate to what my country is expecting me to do, to do because these are the people that have funded, funded me for three weeks <coughs> and they expect me to do what is on their work plan. So it, pa it becomes very, very difficult because I also need to con contribute on behalf of my country, you know, if you understand what I mean. I also need to raise my flag, my Zimbabwean flag very high. Uh, I also need to learn the technique of negotiating. But at times I'm limited because my funder will tell me that, you know what, this contract is open. If you are not interested in doing A, B, C, and D, we can terminate the contract. And I met a 50-50 situation where I have to sneak from meeting A to meeting mm -hmm. B, trying to, uh, trying to balance 
trying to balance so that I get to understand, which is what most African, maybe not young people, but what most Africans are, 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 are facing. But as for the developed countries, it's because they are the ones that are funding you funding to come, program. which yeah. means they are, they, they are very uh, comfortable and they can attend to all meetings, in their mm -hmm. party meetings, and they can actually groom their young people in terms of negotiations. So this is also a disadvantage to us Africans because we are being funded by external donors. They expect you to do what they want you to do. And I give less time to my continent, to my country as Zimbabwe. Okay. But to their side, it's covered. You see. So this is what most yeah. Africans are facing. facing. Yes. And, and it's, 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 in essence, what you're saying is we're actually negotiating on behalf of the funder. Uh, can you agree with me? In a way, I'm not saying you did that, but yeah. in a way, I mean, agreeing to the conditions, yes, you need to go out there um, and represent your country, but there are set conditions that are now affecting the way you're going to negotiate. Yes. So I guess those are some of the challenges that we, we need to start looking into. You have come back, guys, and, and maybe as we start to pre prepare to close the show, Give us a sense of what what you want to do in the coming year to prepare others, to prepare yourself. Is it your intention to go to COP26 um, COP next year? Mm -hmm. And if it is, um, what are you going to do prior to attending COP26? Maybe uh -huh. you can start with you, Lisa. Okay. Um, so as, as we have indicated throughout the show that... Um, our numbers as Zimbabweans, as Africans, it was quite limited. Um, there's something called um, a local koi, and it is something that I think um, myself and, and, and Elizabeth and Jean are going to have um, discussion about so that we can have a position as a youth from, from Zimbabwe that we're actually going to take on. Because um, even though we went, we went there, the, the, the coordination or like of information was not comprehensive enough. Mm -hmm. So you want to be able to sit down as the youth of Zimbabwe and have discussions on what is affecting us and what we expect um, from the government, what we expect from COP and also from COI. So I think for the coming years, from, for the coming year, we're going to have um, a series of discussions um, um, as youth from across um, Zimbabwe. Elizabeth? Yes, and uh, with my colleagues, Jean and Lisa, we also hope to have a mentorship program uh, starting from 2020. Um, the reason why we want to have a mentorship program is we have realized that most young people are interested in climate change issues, but they do not know the right channel. And at times when you get on these global platforms, you, don't know, you do not know what to say because um, these guys from the developed countries, they read, they understand, they know how to simplify science. But because we are from Southern Africa, from Africa at times, internet, we, are not, we do not have internet access and most issues uh, we are sort of like left behind. So we have decided that um, we want to come up with a mentorship program, mentor uh, some young people on how these negotiate, not like re negotiations work, but on what they should expect and how their programs and their projects that are doing on the ground can actually be financed in terms of mitigation and adaptation so that we can move <coughs> to green jobs and uh, uh, at least assist in innovation, innovative ideas. So this is what we hope for. And from the local COI, we are also planning to have our regional COI in Southern Africa so that when we go there, we, have a, we, we, can, we can give a statement on our local COI and on our region, regional COI as SADAC. That as SADAC, we believe these and these issues are affecting us and this is what we want. And uh, so I would say using the platform and the young people that I work with, that we work with um, using the platform African Youth Edition on Climate Change, um, we have more young people that are eager to know, to learn, to participate in these issues. Um, I will help, uh, we will help using the platform, get some resources, like they were saying, to capacitate each other learn from each other, use a collaborative approach where we get to learn more best practices for them as well and how best do they think we can tackle all these issues. Um, expose them to international platforms. For instance, uh, the younger working groups. We aim to have young people within our platforms participate and lead in certain issues. Maybe we have, you know, active university students on eco-conservation, on agriculture also be able to learn some stuff even those who are like in the informal sector 
also tell and share experiences i'm sure you know by now that they are the more ones with the most innovations especially in our country mm -hmm. so we we're not forgetting them we'll try to get as low as we can so that we can get each other and learn from them at the same time expose them to the platforms that we have so that they can learn and also increase their capacity and um yeah we will look for resources to also to increase our number get other young people to participate at the next COI and next COP um, in addition to the mentorship program that she mentioned and the other thing we need to build confidence in the young people we have young people out there who has the capacity but are not exposed enough I'm um, sure you know we have you know the EMA um, environmental management agency and other platforms out there that are now accredited and can, uh, can uh, get access to you know international funds for instance the adaptation funds through emma i think as young people it's high time we started implementing projects on the ground uh, so our young people out there that are free and have initiatives and ideas please start reaching out to us it might be on water it might be on how best we can strengthen our community so that we can build resilience on issues that affect us these are some of the work that we're going to do and we also try to disintegrate all the information that the government is working on, that international platforms are working on through our IEC website and other platforms. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, I also we will also work with Earth Day, which is a project that we incorporate uh, under IEC as well, since Earth Day is I think, one of the biggest environmental networks in the world with more than a billion of people, you know, with the, it's quite a famous one with Leonardo DiCaprio, all the celebrities being part of the board. We we'll try to, as we celebrate the 50th anniversary, uh, in April, we'll try to also do a huge momentum initiative that can speak to the how much we need everybody to join hands and the little things that people do in their homes and their communities can also now start contributing to the national plans on climate change and environment. So we're planning to the 22nd and we're looking forward to doing something massive uh, also in line with the other practical projects that we'll be doing with young people. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Um, it's been very informative. Um, you guys seem to be informed with the programs. And uh, um, f thank you for representing Zimbabwe. Um, just one word. Um, Greta, what does she mean to you guys? Just one <laughs> word from each of you. What does Greta mean to you? I'm sure you, you saw the strike that was done at the mm. uh, thing. What does she mean? Does she inspire you? What does she do to you guys as we close? I mean, you can't describe Greta in one way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need to give yeah. us more time. <laughs> wow, time which is yeah. time which we don't have at the moment. And but it was good having you guys on this program and discussing uh, your experience um, as a person. What has it done to you? Maybe just one word. I'm sure you can do that. Okay, um, maybe I'll just go back to the creator <laughs> that you spoke about. Um, I think what I learned is that um, it doesn't matter how old you are, you can still be involved. Um, and one of the, the theme for Koi was we are action. And as youth, we definitely have to take action because um, we're not only doing it for ourselves, but we're doing it for the future generations to come. Elizabeth? Yeah, I actually had the time to speak to Greta, by the way. Yeah, huh? yes, good for you, yeah. yes, good for me. And she also had plans of coming to Africa. But how we are still we are still trying to figure it out how she will come to Africa because she does not fly, but she has managed to influence us for de for decision makers and uh, the political uh, the political leaders to feel a bit intimidated. For example, Trump is because of Greta, and this is the movement that we want. That's the action we are talking about. Okay, mm -hmm. and G. I would say let's develop more young people on the ground. You can see how much impact she has caused and the knowledge is not just limited. So other young people on the ground, let's be real role models and rise now. Okay. It's your time, you're not limited. All right. Um, thank you for coming to the program, The Green Show. Um, the program talks about climate issues, environmental issues. We would really like to have you back on this show again and um, look forward to your uh, success in terms of encouraging other youths like you uh, bringing new greaters in Zimbabwe yeah. who can stand out <laughs> for climate change and yeah. um, in terms of climate action we need to act now and that's the message that we've been picking out yeah. our program is uh, run every Wednesday we encourage to come in and uh, discuss more about climate change and inform us so that uh, Zimbabweans know what what is transpiring so yeah, this program was um, courtesy of heart and soul Thank you for coming and hopefully 
um, you will achieve what you've actually set yourselves to, say, to, uh, to achieve. Okay. This program was brought to you courtesy of um, HSTV and um, um, I'm your host, Wilson Chimwezi. It's been a wonderful time having with you guys and discuss. May you have a good week and look forward to a new year. Yes, 2020. thank you for having us. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And that is the end of the show. Thanks. Thank you.